Hello, and welcome to Things That Fall Out Of My Head. Today we're going to be having a look at the armour panels for my Mandalorian flak vest. As I'd mentioned previously in a video, all of these pieces have been 3D printed by Adam at Fair Price Props. Um, he's a really, really good seller over on Etsy. Uh, he's a UK-based uh, manufacturer, not that far from where I live. Uh, and all of these pieces were produced by him. So today I'm just going to be focusing on this one particular armour piece. Um, given how I was having to um, work around the unpredictable British summer weather, uh, I thought I'll just show off one piece in each stage as I go, um, and the same techniques have been applied across the board to all of the other ones. I should probably mention that these pieces actually had to be cut down a little bit from when they were originally delivered. Um, I'm, I'm quite a short guy, I don't need all of these big plates, so I, I ended up trimming down the excess on either side. Uh, I did the same thing with the chest plates as well, um, just marked them out and cut them with a hacksaw. After that it was just a case of sanding the edges down with some heavy grit sandpaper, and it's the same thing I did all over the piece uh, before I got onto this stage here with the Bondo. The product I used is Bondo Spot Glazing Putty, I think it's called. It's, um, it's actually a little bit difficult to find in the UK. There was only, uh, there was only one seller that I could really find who, who stocked it, but luckily I put in an order for quite a few tubes, so uh, I should have enough to complete all of this, plus the helmet and a few other bits and pieces. Um, I'm not going to go too extensively through the process of doing this. There's some you know, images on screen now of uh, a couple of different stages. But um, there are many, many other channels who cover this process a lot more exhaustively than I'm able to. You know, because of where we live, where the garden's overlooked, I don't really want to be dragging out, fil uh, you know, filming equipment into the garden just to show you sanding. Um, you know, check out someone like Galactic Armory. Um, he has great tutorials on how to do this. Um, so I just wanted to document a couple of stages here. You know, there was the, the Bondo, then that was sanded back and then a few coats of uh, filler primer. This is, I think it's High Coats uh, filler primer. You can get it uh, Amazon. Um, it's, it's available in car repair places like Halfords. Um, I wasn't really sure how this was gonna go on because I've, I've seen other people processing 3D prints and the usual uh, 3D uh, filler primer that they use doesn't seem to be available in the UK rather frustratingly. So I took a chance on this particular one and uh, it worked out pretty well. When we're finished with all that sanding we should have some nice processed pieces like this. Um, I, th I think I'm just pointing out a couple of little areas on there that I'm gonna need to go back and have another little look at uh, once these things had fully dried. Um, I really needed to tackle the, uh, the chest diamond here because originally in the center there it had some nice uh, printed details but I wanted mine to be completely smooth so I just jammed loads of Bondo in there and hoped it would cure, uh, knowing that I'd be going back in with a piece of Snyrene just to cover this over and give me a nice clean finish. Pretty simple process if you're ever used to dealing with Styrene in the past. It's a nice um, soft material to work with. I think this is just one millimeter thick Styrene sheet. Um, I took a couple of measurements off of the, uh, the chest diamond itself, replicated it on the Styrene and then just cut it out, gave it a sand. Uh, ready to be glued in place over all of the Bondo in the middle there. This is of course very much personal preference. I mean, I was originally going to be leaving the detail in there, but just something in my mind, I, I wanted a nice clean blank finish in there. Um, I think once that all of the arm is assembled together, uh, it just looked better to my eye to have a nice, uh, a nice clean plain finish across all of it. When it came time to actually uh, attaching these plates to the flak vest, um, there were a few options. I mean, I initially considered magnets. Um, I, I actually have several packets of magnets now where I was trying to uh, get the correct size and, um, and pull weight on them. Uh, I played around with it a little bit, testing it on the flak vest itself because it's quite, it's quite thick, as you can see in the video that I produced about making that. Um, and I, I, didn't, I didn't really want to go the Velcro route, just my my hatred of velcro is well known um and i was doing a bit of research online and uh came across the dented helmet forums um and it was a user called wasted fat i believe who came up with this idea of using jewelry pins so these are effectively just little thumbtacks or the uh the pins that you'd get on the back of of badges or pieces of jewelry 
and and these came from Amazon. I mean, they weren't they weren't expensive. I got a pack of I think fifty, um, something like that, fifty individual pins, and then uh, a few options for the 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 backing pieces. But on that forum post, um, someone had mentioned about using lockable backs. These are little cylinders um, that replace the normal jewelry back to the pin, um, and they've got a little Allen screw in them so that when you Put them over the back of the pin you can tighten them up with the allen key and they're a lot lot harder to get off than the usual backings i think these are used by law enforcement someone mentioned i don't know um mine came from amazon again um so it just seemed like a a, a bit more of a reassuring way of attaching them than just relying on these little uh pressed metal pieces that came with it i decided to try it out on the chest diamond because it was the smallest piece that i was going to have to be attaching um and i could maybe use that to gauge how many of these little pins I was going to need because although 3D printed pieces are very lightweight um, I wasn't sure whether it was going to be oh, I can get away with two pins on this small piece or whether I was going to need four to make sure it was going to be stable once it was on the vest um, I wasn't too sure whether it was going to move around too much or whether there'd be enough purchase just with these so I just applied a couple of pins to this piece um, they were attached using two-part epoxy uh, adhesive. Uh, I made sure that it was on the back of the pin itself and then also covered it over to, to make sure that there was enough grab on there. I did, didn't want these things coming off while I was playing around with them. And it seemed to work fine, to be honest with you. The only thing that I had to be a little bit careful with was there was some uh, additional adhesive on the actual pins themselves while I was trying to get all of the glue on there with a little piece of plastic. So I just went back in after this had cured, it only took five minutes, uh, with my scalpel and just took that off of the pins because you don't want anything on there when you're trying to push it through fabric, just to keep them clean as you can. And it's really simple as that. It was a great simple idea that I thought, you know, why bother trying to make things more complicated than they need to be? The, uh, the only real issue was going around each piece and finding out where I wanted the points of contact to be. So is a piece going to hang? Does it need to make contact with the vest at certain points? Uh, or in case of the chest armor, you've got three pieces that overlap each other and the plate below. So I knew when it came to doing the back plate, I'd want it to hang from the top. But then also I'd need something at the bottom to stop it billowing out or pulling away from the vest. And as it turned out, when I'd done the fitting, I actually went back and added a lot more pins to the back piece because it's so curved. Um, I ended up adding them all the way down each side, uh, as well as at the top and the bottom. When it came to doing the chest plate, I knew the chest diamond was going to be in there originally, so uh, with those pieces I just put some more around the top. Again, I did come back and add more later, um, just after I'd done some test fitting and realised where things were going to hang. Similarly with this stomach plate, I thought it's probably not going to need too much support at the bottom, it's only really going to hang from this top piece, that's the, the part that I need to lay as flat as possible because you're going to have the chest pieces overlapping it from above. So all in all, adding the attachment points to the plates was actually relatively painless. Um, once I had uh, I decided where everything needed to go, and got, I got everything glued on in you know an hour or so. Um, and it was then down to uh, test fitting it and seeing how these things were going to hang if it was going to work the way I thought it would. Um, so I started off by assembling from the bottom up effectively. So the, the lowest layer is going to be the stomach plate, then you need the chest diamond in, the, in there, and of course then the chest plates are attached after that. Um, and it was just a case of doing it by eye to start with. Um, you know, luckily my mannequin is about the same size as me, so I can use it to get a rough idea. But then it's just very much a case of trial and error. So you'll see me adjust a little bit, take it off the mannequin. Uh, I actually edited out the parts where I left the room because I don't have a full length mirror in this room. So uh, I'd make some adjustments, take it off of the mannequin, try it on myself uh, and just to make sure like here where there was, there's some gapping between the plates um, and that's because when it's physically on me it hangs differently to how it hangs on the mannequin. The, uh, the mannequin unfortunately is a little bit fitter than me um, so I had to keep adjusting it and trying it to make sure that it fit correctly. So there was a uh, quick field repair needed here. The, uh, the velcro that held the side shut came out and this is why I don't like velcro. 
uh, but once that was back in, the the back plate was um, a lot quicker to to get into place. There's 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 no complicated over overlapping parts. It's just get it to roughly where I think it should be, try the thing on, and as long as the back plate isn't sitting way too high or way too low, then it should be pretty much okay. So it was one more quick round of adjustments, and then I could get the whole thing reassembled with the, uh, the sides closed and the pouches on there, and just get a, a final look of, of, of how it appeared overall. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. I mean, there's, there's still some minor gapping on the, on the front plates, but again, that's due to the difference in fit between my uh, perfectly sculpted uh, mannequin and me, who is most definitely not. Um, but it, it's, it gives you a good idea of what it's going to look like when it's on. Um, it actually got to the point where I was getting quite enamoured with the yellow colour of them, but uh, that's definitely going to be changing. We're going to be going with a dark blue on there. Um, but as you can see, it looks it looks okay. Um, again, on the back plate there, there's a, there's a big gap uh, by the armhole, but again, I've since gone in and put some more pins in there, so that should hold a lot more to the vest. Apart from that, that's pretty much it. We're, we're ready for paint, I think. So that'll about do it for today's video. Um, I'll be back next time with, uh, with an update on the paint. Uh, if you've got any comments, any questions, please leave them down below, um, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers for watching.